There's no sexy way to eat a noodle. Mm. Indonesian food isn't as famous as other Southeast Asian cuisines. You would think a country with the fourth largest population in the world would be better represented. It has all the notes to make it big internationally, but its diversity might be what is hindering it. Go up to a stranger and ask them to describe Indonesian food and you'll probably get a very nuanced answer because there's just so much to discover. After spending a few days here, I've realized how much depth this cuisine has taking you on a journey filled with shiny new flavors, spices, and techniques that will leave you with a filled mind and an even fuller stomach. In our previous episode, we showed you some of the staples that can be found in the country. That's good. That's good. Oh my god. <laughs> Today, I want to take you around to discover some more unknown delicacies. Calbrain curry. As well as other places around Jakarta where you can have some good eats. When you feel like shit about yourself, eat this. Yeah. So get ready to sweat from both the weather and the chilies. <laughs> It's time for breakfast and I'm absolutely starving. I'm gonna meet some people and some friends right now. They're gonna show me some of the best bakmi in the city. Bakmi is kind of like a national obsession. Having noodles with tons of different toppings on them with some spice, of course. I'm just really excited at this point. I'm so hungry. Bakmi is Hokkien for meat noodles. Hot bowls of these wheat-based noodles can be found all over Asia where there's a strong Chinese population of immigrants from the Fujian province. Bakmi is also said to be the great-grandfather of spaghetti if you believe the stories. In Jakarta, the dish has evolved into a truly Indonesian experience, from varying ingredients with which the noodles are made, to their thickness and shape, to the toppings and spices. Lucky for you, one street next to Kelapagading is filled with little shops all specializing in different executions of the dish. We decided to come to Holiao. This is the place to go if you're looking for some pork. From crispy belly to bacon to char siu preparations, they do it all. So what do you particularly like about this place? The noodle. The, the texture, noodles. yeah. Right. And then on top of that too, like usually bak mi is cooked in a sweet sauce. Personally not a fan, so, and I prefer it like saltier, and this is the saltier. Got it. So this would be um, this is... pork belly? Yeah. Right? And it's crisp yep. on the top. I love how it's just like literally... Yep. They do it really well. It's basically like pretty... chicharron on top and yeah. then just nicely cooked mm -hmm. there. And that fat is insane. <laughs> There's no sexy way to eat a noodle. Mm. So I'm gonna try this pork. Mm, so it's like, so yeah, good. it's definitely like a char siu, sweeter. But they have like spices on there as well. Mm -hmm. Five spice usually. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next okay, bowl? Next bowl. Alright, so this is the Bruce Lee yeah. noodle. So this is something that they invented and it's nasi campur toppings, but on bakmi. Nasi campur is like a mixed rice dish, right? This is the Chinese version of it. Okay. So you get like roasted chicken, the same char siu, and then the crispy pork again. And then this is called ngo hyo. So it's pork, prawn, and carrots that's wrapped in bean curd skin okay. and then fried. And then this is just a sweet pork satay. Mm. Mm. That's, a, that's almost like what we have. I don't know if you have you tried lumpia? Yes. So I have. it's like that, mm. except we have a filo pastry yeah. wrapping or rice paper yeah. wrap. Yum. That's really good. And this one here is the. This is the. Um, the wire noodles. Wire noodles. Yeah. Okay. With, this is the one with bacon. This is the one with bacon. So bacon so, is not a thing here. Oh, uh, it's starting to be. Okay, like starting. It's, it's a new no. trendy thing. I think these, this might be my favorite. Really? In terms of texture, no. I just like the thin, kind of clumpy mm. texture you get from here. They have like a super thick version of this, but unless you've got like a gigantic stomach, you're not gonna be able to make it. Like so much more. If I eat this in the morning, I think yeah. you're good until yeah, at least yeah. 4 p.m. Yeah. Go home and nap. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about this bacon. But I mean, I love it. Yeah. But it just it just feels really kind of like like a complete departure. Yeah. 
But then I guess it's like catering into making bakmi cool again, you yeah. know? Like, Would this be something that people actually make at home? No. No. Like, can you imagine the effort of breaking the down? the process, yeah. right? And the bowl here is how much? 45, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so it's about a, like three bucks. Three dollars. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. No. So, I mean, great value because yeah. you get so much protein, yeah. a lot of carbs, you yeah. probably get really full up after all this, yeah. right? Nasi Padang is comfort food full stop. This is the experience most Indonesians will miss when they live abroad, and it's a perfect place for tourists to try everything from the famous beef rendang to more obscure dishes you've probably never heard about. The process is simple. You show up, you sit down, and out of nowhere, a stream of waiters will come charging through with platters filled to the brim with small plates, each different from the next. A waltz of food. But this is, so this is kind of like the, I, I guess like a local version of a buffet. I counted about 30 on our table, but you can ask for more. Once all of it is set, it almost looks comedic, but don't worry, you don't have to eat it all. But you're not obliged to eat everything that's here. No, you pay mostly for those that you touched and even sometimes just for the pieces that you took from a particular plate. The cashier then comes along to ring you up, taking quick note of what was consumed and totaling the bill for you. It's a swift, confusing and exhilarating experience. And so, okay, so in front of us here we have the rendang. The beef rendang. Beef rendang. Okay. This is a lone, very lonely piece. I, it looks like a testicle. That's what it looks like to me. Is it a testicle? No. Brain. That's ah, brain. What kind of brain? Cow brain. Cow brain. Cow brain curry. Cow brain curry. <laughs> I don't think I'll be thankful for anything after this. I'm thankful right now. Like, yeah. this is just so much yeah. food. All right, I'm gonna start with the cow brain. That's delicious. I've always been a fan of brain when it's properly done, and this is like creamy. not overly creamy. Mm. It still has a little bounce to it. I mean, I've actually never had a proper rendang in my life. Yeah, it's so one of the best rendang. That is intense. Yeah. How many how many spices in a rendang? Over oh like 13. 15. Wow. Mm. Okay. What was this called again? Deng deng. Deng deng. Deng deng. So you're saying this is That's not what as I like into the tapa. It's not as spicy as it looks. No. Mm. It's just <laughs> she's not too sure about it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, this one's not okay. too bad. You feel but that it is sweeter. Yes. yes. This is actually delicious. So it's um this one here? Yeah. It's green chili, lime leaves, um, garlic, shallots, and it's fried. Like deep fried. Oh that one's scary. Don't put that straight into your uh, mouth. Yeah, I would eat that with she, she says it's nice, but we're a tiny bit of it. Yeah. So Indonesian food is definitely not the food you bring someone out on a date. If my date couldn't not eat like this... First date. Not on a first date. Maybe sure. not on a first date. That's good. You gotta try the drink. That's, yeah, that's really fresh. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna try one last thing. I think I have one more space for the anchovies. That's... Pungent. Yeah. Yeah, those anchovies will... I'm gonna smell like that for the rest of the day. <laughs> Indonesia produces a lot of coffee, so you would be missing out if you didn't check out a couple of local shops while you're in town. For a truly local experience, I would highly recommend going to Coffee Johnny. The guy just looks like a rock star behind his little shop, blasting loud music and moving with godlike speed to fill all his cups with condensed milk and filtered dark coffee. If you're itching for more meat, and I don't blame you, Chinatown is probably one of the only areas in Jakarta where you can feast in some pork since the nation is primarily Muslim. So if you've had your fill of nasi goreng, your next venture should be nasi champur, basically just mixed rice. This broad term just opens up all the possibilities of things you can put on rice. So this dish is called nasi champur. Nasi champur, and it's just a big, beautiful plate of meat. Literally, uh, mixed rice. Yeah. Oh, so it rice. means mixed rice. Yeah, okay. champur is mixed and nasi is rice. In nasi champur akwang, 
Your perfectly cooked rice is served with a meat lover's wet dream. Some chopped pork belly, a sprinkle of char siu perhaps, a leg of roast chicken and a side of pork sausage. All served over rice glazed with a thickened chicken broth and of course, two types of spicy sambals. All right, dig in, guys. Let's yeah, try yeah. it out. Okay, I'm gonna start with that. That's so comforting. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a surprise under the rice. I saw that. What is that? Ah, oh, that's a chicken bone. Yeah, it's just chicken pieces. Chicken. Okay. A nasi champor is literally just a cup of rice and and fixings over it. So okay. this is all pork because we're in the Chinese area, but it can be a nasi champor with, with chicken on it. But again, different. Chicken cooked different ways. I like what you said, huh? it's not sweet. And this is just the same thing except the rice is plain white rice. Plain white rice. Mmm, that's so healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so healthy. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, this is the perfect food to wallow in your self pity. Yeah. Like, when you feel like shit about yourself, eat this. Yeah. You'll yeah. feel even more like shit, but at least you'll be happy and very yeah. full. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Anything can be called nasi campur. Okay. Anything. Anything. It's with a general like, term yeah. and it's, it's found all over the archipelago. Yeah. So rice with stuff. Stuff. Yeah. I needed to sit down because that was way too much food. I don't think I've eaten that much in a long, long time, but that just goes to show you how much variety Indonesian food and Indonesian cooking has. I can't even talk properly because of all the fat that we consume today. Um, but everything was so intricate. I find it to be such an intelligent cuisine with just so many flavors, so many spices, so many textures, so many different processes that goes into the food and it's just, it's been a wild ride for me because I feel like Indonesian food as a whole is extremely underrated and a lot of people don't actually know about it. Internationally, it's still pretty unknown, very close to what Filipino food is and I feel like it's a cuisine that needs to get out there more because people would appreciate it um, just like we did in this trip. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please do check out episode one where we give you kind of a breakdown on what to do if you have only one night in Jakarta. Um, just basically all the street food that you can have and just hitting those hits that you need to have. Hitting those hits, hitting those hits, hitting those hits, speak English Air One. Um, and so yeah, God, I can't even think. But yeah, so watch that first episode and if you can, watch the next episode because of how intricate the cuisine is, I actually do want to learn more about it. Um, so we're gonna head on into some different kitchens and hopefully learn how to make some staple dishes um, and just see how they put things together. So I hope you guys enjoy that. As always, please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Peace out.